Peace and power to the tribe, man. What's good with y'all, man? Y'all feeling good? We feeling good? We vibrate. We all right? Everybody all right? You doing all right, man? Let me see your eyes, man. Let me see your eyes, man. All right, man. Cool, man. Cool. We checking in, man. I know it's been a couple of days, man. I've been over here getting my my super web web developer hat on, man. You see my, my head is spinning. Hope y'all been enjoying the site. It's been building up, man. If you've been surfing the wave, on a daily basis, if you've been at 432thedrop.com, man, you've been able to see the, the the slow progress that's been going on a daily basis. So thank y'all for vibing, man. We're almost there. We got some vibe suites up for y'all to check out. Check out the vibe suites. The password is always the same, one, two, three, four, for now. But keep subscribing. Keep dropping it on the site. So we got your email. Once you subscribe to us, we got your email. So we'll be able to keep up with you. Every time we change the passwords, we'll give you the new password. Love to everybody. Much a hop to the family on the drop tuner package. You can you can try all this stuff on the right hand side of the of the uh, of the website, man. So when you get when you get on it, try out the drop tuner package. Check out frequency of learning. Go support my man. Go support the tribe, Jay Stu. Go support Camellia. Go support their first seed, man. They're having their first beautiful, you know what I'm saying, seed of love coming in, man. So they're expecting soon. We're trying to be a wall of protection. We are a wall of protection. This is what we do for each other. So go hit that GoFundMe. Love to those that dropped it on. The tribe, man. Love to the battle family, man, for everything you do on a daily basis as a wall of protection for us and with us. Uh, love to our sister Larissa Freeman, man. Truth realized, man, for all the drop you've dropped for all the steps you've taken, man, just to give that a hop to the family in real time. Pure water, we appreciate you and all the family, all the tribe surfing the wave, man. Love to Paco, got his King's Oil just popping off, man. King's Oil is popping. Go get that King's Oil. Go check it out in the drop shop. Our sister Vanessa just dropped her uh, her hair and body. Uh, shea, shea butter. Get that, man, she, she, she got the tea tree the lavender, everything going into this shea butter. So check out all that right now in the drop shop. Just click the links below, get that drop shop, and uh, just support the tribe, man. We're doing our indigenous products. We're dropping it on y'all, man. You know what I mean? That's what I've been doing, man. That's what I've been doing, man. Just rocking behind the scenes a little bit, building this up, man. We're almost there. So you'll know when the site is done, when the website is done, you'll be able to click that play button and hear that live radio coming right out of there, man. We'll be doing it on, on a daily basis. So everything you do to support us, to support the tribe, every time you click our PayPal, that goes directly into the drop radio infrastructure and that helps us build faster and stronger and everything that we want to be able to come to you on a daily basis. Not just us, but our other you know family, brothers and sisters that are dropping their radio shows. We're gonna be able to support them directly as well. So we're, we're doing our own framework, our own platform, our own area, our own alcove of seclusion, of separation that we can come and drop this stuff without dropping it on Google. We can, you know, drop it right there in our chat room. We got our chat room up, man. Again, the password is one, two, three, four. Everyone that's been dropping in the chat room, love to you, man. We're going to get it rolling, man. You can drop PDFs. You can uh, download PDFs. You can drop uh, live audio, video, all that. And you know what I'm saying? You just, uh, you know, come in, do it right. You know what I mean? Surf the wave, man. Don't get dropped off. Don't, don't come over here bringing no no static because you will get dropped off man in a real way in real time man that's just you know we're hijack free man so you know we're, we're letting you in our home come kick it with us come kick it in our chat room again the live radio is about to be coming right out the drop man so no more uh hiatus you know what i'm saying we've we've uh made shirts in the meantime man we've we've dropped it on youtube in the meantime but now to finally be back in one place back at home in our home 432thedrop.com kicking it in our library kicking in our vibe suites we're building our artist lounge up for all the independent artists we're putting your music in 432 we'll be having our artist competitions again doing our giveaways you know dropping the dropping the spins you know what i'm saying just the spin cycles getting your music spinning on 432 to drop radio we'll get it spinning for our community man you know we're just trying to do it all in one place in one area because we're surfing this particular wave we're on a particular frequency am i we're, we're on that frequency man 432 to drop so because of that you know we, we're patient because we're building something from scratch but it's coming through like a sprouting seed within us we're putting it all together so now we've got a library up with 130 pdfs and again we're going to have our our artist network you know a whole thing man that we could feature your music feature your videos 
you know what I'm saying, do live features, uh, you know, live interviews on the radio, all that to bring all of our creativity in one place so we can all surf the wave together. But remember, it's only about connecting back to our framework and shape. It's only back, about connecting back to our source, man. We're talking about freedom. We're talking about keeping it real, getting out the illusion. So, Shabbat Shalom, man. I know you had a tough week, but we made it. Look at us, man. Look at us, man. We vibrating, man. Ain't you vibrating? My sisters, ain't you vibrating? I know you feel this, man. Go. If you ain't vibrating, press pause. Go to 432 to drop. 432 the drop radio. Click on the vibe suites. Go into the indigenous flutes. Go into Lover's Rock. Go into Mimosa Jazz. Go into uh, the High Road. You know what I'm saying? Go into one of these great vibration suites. We call them vibe suites. And just let the slideshow play. And just let it go. Let it flow. Then come back. And then, you know, let's just uh, get groovy together. Let's keep it wavy. We're back in the Lost Tribes of Promised Lands. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, man, we surfing the wave together, man. I love y'all, man. Shabbat shalom, mom. You made it. We made it. We are tribe. We're tribing up. We vibing up. I want to get it right to it. All right, this PDF is up in the drop library, so pull this PDF up in the library. All right, this is page 120. All right, I'm just going to get there, man. I'm going to tell you what page I'm on. You pull up that PDF. That's in your free virtual resource, your library. Our website is free. You can use our Vibe Suites for free. You can use our library for free. All that will always be free to you. And if you want to support us, you can cop one of our drop shops, drop drop shirts, one of our drop apparel. You can support our family that's in the drop shop. You know what I mean? Click on our PayPal. That's how you support us, man, and we appreciate that. But our site is a free resource a free resource for the independent artists. We're going to put your music up for free. All that stuff, we're going to be doing that, all right, because we want to build up our infrastructure and just let us know, man, that, you know what I'm saying, we can do it in one place. We can build it up. We can have our framework, and we can rock this, man. Let's go. So remember, you know, I got a party going on, you know what I'm saying. Uh, you know, my, my house is busy. I got to hide outside sometimes. I can't be in my office, all right? You know, I, I can't be in the streets. I just got to come back here and I got to hide. Me and my, me and my wall. Me and my wall, man. Me and my wall know each other well. We kick it a lot. It'd be like two in the morning. I just come, come and just chill on the wall, man. Make sure it's all good. Make sure ain't no possums back here, man. I mean, Inglewood there's a lot of possums and a lot of planes. So you're going to hear a lot of planes. You might see a possum come, you know, come on my wall, but I probably know him by name by now. I know I'm a possum, homies, you know what I'm saying? So check it, man. Columbus's Golden World. Actually, let's go to uh, 120 right quick. So it says, he too. Let's go back. So far as it is known, Kovelhan, Kavalhan, ended his days in Ethiopia. He too was a living symbol of the demystification of the East. Ending like the legend of Prester John. Now, Prester John is priest king priest or Wang Khan, Wang Khan, or Hong Khan, right? So Ong Khan, Wang Khan, Hong Khan, all mean priest, king. The Khan is the priest. The Wang is the king. King, priest, priest, king. Now, we didn't speak English, so to us it was a, you know, whatever be the equivalent of our chief. Our tribal chief was our king, right? Our chief was our king. So our priest, king. All right, our chief was our priest. Let's go. So he too was a living legend or a symbol of the demystification of the East. So something is being demystified. You're the mystery being demystified. Ending like the legend of Prester John in the Abyssinian dust. So Abyssinia was the original term for Ethiopia. Or not the original, but it was one of the earlier terms. Ethiopia just means a vast region, a region of dark-skinned people. Uh, it didn't mean, uh, man, y'all see that possum? I wish I could turn the camera, man. I told y'all, man. That's uh, Consuelo. He's cool, though, man. Con Consuelo! What's up, man? Yeah, man. They be, phew. see how fast they were? You didn't even see it, it's that fast. Jumping Jack Flash. So, 
We got the Abyssinia. So that was the, you know, before it was Ethiopian, we're talking Abyssinia. So this priest king was left in the Abyssinian dust. Let's keep reading. So Preston John was left in the dust of the demystification of what they're calling Abyssinia. Just a region of dark people, whether it's in the east or the west, they have the Abyssinia of the Orient, they have the Abyssinia of the West, all right? This is towards Atlantis, Lemuria over here, right? Mu, the Pacific, this is all what they would consider the Orient, because remember, east is west and west is east, north is south. You think you're in North America, you're in South America. You don't have to believe me, just know they flipped your ass upside down. So with that legend, with the legend of your priest king, Negro, for the time being, went all hope of a noble image of the Negro. You don't know how important it is when we say who was Preston John. Because when they took away and they turned your priest king into nothing but a myth, just like you read about Kitsukoltu, it's nothing but a myth anything to do with you has been implanted in you as a myth so even if you come stumble on this stuff it will fall into the myth category in your subconscious I mean that's like telling um, you know what I'm saying your stepson you got a stepson that's like telling your stepson that his real daddy is a myth didn't really exist he grows up, kind of finds, you know, some type of trail on his real pops, but he doesn't really, can't really take it serious because it's just a myth. So where do you come from, Negro? So with that legend, with the legend of Prester John, Priest King, Wong Khan, for the time being, all hope of the noble image all hope of the noble image when Preston John was taken all hope of a noble image of the Negro went to counter the one that was coming with growing force out of West Africa page 120 with that legend with the reality when your priest king got turned into a myth, a legend, went all hope of a noble image of the Negro to counter the one that was coming with growing force out of West Africa. What is Ronald Sanders talking about? What is he talking about in the Lost Tribes of Promised Land? What happened? What, what growing force? With the legend of Preston John went all hope of the noble image of the Negro? Well, you never heard about him. I mean, that's checkmate, right? Until you wake up and you find out and you start realizing and you say, oh, that's not a title, that's, a, that's not a name, that's a title. And you start realizing all of your priest kings, these are the Exilarchs. But what is an Exilarch? I don't know. You just know about a president now, right? Remember, only a corporation has a president and a vice president. Are you a corporation? With that legend, for the time being, went all hope of the noble image of the Negro to counter the one that was coming with growing force out of West Africa. So they brought you a new image out of Africa. But that image wasn't your noble image this image was a savage image it was an image of a home-born slave of a slave of a savage slave now now you think you're from West Africa so here comes the what <laughs> to counter the one that was coming with growing force so this growing force of this new history that you're from Africa there goes your noble image because you can't be noble if you have no land, don't you get it? 
you can't be noble if you're on someone else's land and you're a foreigner. And when you go to Africa, you're a foreigner. And when you come here, you're a foreigner. So where's your land, Negro? It seems like somebody lying. Somebody don't want to give up their land. Well, you say, man, if everybody is making a confederacy against me, then my land must be the best shit on earth. I mean, hey, for all the trouble you've caused us, it might as well be the best land on earth that we get back. But the truth is, we're in the old world. America is in the old world, sandwiched between Lemuria and sandwiched between Atlantis. And now what do you have? A new world to them. Now they think it's a whole new world. Because they just were able to break free from the Mediterranean Sea. Before that, they were trapped. Trapped in their world. And they found you in another world. And they took out your priest kings. And with that went all hope of a noble image of the Negro. Once Prester John was turned into a myth. Now let's skip down to uh, chapter 8, page 93. We got this before. Let's connect it because I'm going to get back into that chapter 3 as we get into Preston John. You see, I'm, I'm getting ready for this, right? I got I to gotta gear up to this, man. This, this is going to be a beautiful wave we surf, man. It's going to be a wave that lasts for a while. So just get your rain boots ready. We're about to turn the Preston John corner once again. And it's going to be Preston John probably 28 through 50. Let's go. So we don't know much concerning Columbus's crew of about 90 men aboard the three ships. But at least one of them was an Israelite whose presence as such was not merely accidental. This was Louis Torres, a convert of possibly only that year. So Louis Torres was a convert, not an Israelite. He converted, but that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. Now hold up. Louis Torres converted. He knows how to speak what? Aramaic and Hebrew. So Louis Torres, a convert of possibly that year who had once held a position with the governor of Mercia, was said to have known Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arabic, and had been brought along by Columbus specifically as an interpreter. One of the purposes of the voyage, as we have seen, was to find the great Khan. All right, we're talking to Mary Khans. We're talking Preston John. Let me get my water, man, because it's going to be good. Hopefully y'all got to meditate, man, for a few minutes. <laughs> Had to turn my fan off. That thing was loud. So we don't know much concerning Columbus's crew of about 90 men aboard the three ships, but at least one of them was an Israelite whose presence as such was not merely accidental, Negro. 
And this was Louis Torres, a convert of possibly only that year who had once held a position with the governor of Mercia. He was said to have known Hebrew, Arabic, Aramaic, and had been brought along by Columbus specifically as an interpreter. And I'm asking you, so-called Negro, who were they interpreting that spoke Hebrew? Who was Columbus bringing to this world that they're finding, sandwiched between Atlantis and Lemuria, sunken lands, the only thing left standing, the Most High allowed them to cross this partition to find you. Who was here that spoke Hebrew that Columbus needed an interpreter to find and he called him the Great Khan, the Grand Khan, right? We're talking South America, we're talking Cuba, we're talking Haiti, we're talking America. Now, if that don't ring a bell, if you think this is about religion, if you think this is about his story and not your story, then this will be taught in school. You should be, right? You should know about Prester John in school. Except, there's one reason. There's one reason and one reason only why you never learn about this and why this will never be in your curriculum, which means that this is worth digging on. That with, with the legend of Prester John, went for the time being all hope of a noble image of the Negro. They can't teach you about your priest, Negro. They killed your priest. You're going to wake up and say, that's who I am? Why did you kill him? Or why did you slaughter all of our priests? I mean, you know, maybe Preston John made it out this thing. I mean, maybe he kept taking his baths in the fountain of youth. Like he said, he took six baths in the fountain of youth. And every time he went back to the age of 32. And these were in letters that they're finding in 1165. Now, where did they get this whole baptism thing? baptizing in the living water from? Is it from the fountain of youth? Well, now that makes a lot of sense, right? Because I don't mind taking a bath in living water that keeps turning me back to 32. But if you're going to sprinkle me on some ceremony or dump me in the ocean as an abstraction of my fountain of youth, of my living water, of the real concrete, the real spill, that's a different water. And that's a different program. So Preston John is your last noble image. Priest King Wong Kong is your last noble image of you, Negro. Because this is, this is your chief. This is your chief that went down with you. This is the chief and the title of chiefs that were passed on all the way. Abraham's a priest king. Moses is a priest king. Joshua's a priest king. They're all Wong Kongs. They're all Hong Kong. They're Americans. Now Columbus came over here with this Louis Torres who spoke Aramaic, Arabic, and Hebrew, specifically as an interpreter. Now one of the purposes of the voyage, as we have seen, was to find the Great Khan. Columbus is looking for the Great Khan, the Grand Khan. He's looking for the Israelite king and he's bringing a Hebrew interpreter. And he's telling you, not even you, he's telling Ferdinand and them in the Biblioteca de Colombina in Sevilla, Spain, I'm going to America to conquer the Holy City. I'm going to America to conquer Mount Zion. I'm going to America specifically to conquer Mount Zion and the Holy City. And that's in his words, in the Biblioteca de Columbina. We're talking the Book of Prophecies in Sevilla, Spain. Now you hear Lost Tries and Promised Land, Ronald Sanders saying the same thing. He's looking for the great Khan. But you always thought Khan to do with Genghis Khan. But Genghis Khan is a melanated brother. And he was having a, <laughs> a war with his uncle or foster uncle 
who is the priest king that was defending you. So Genghis Khan, or they call him Temujan Khan, called Prester John Khan Father. He called him a Khan Father, like Godfather. Khan Father. He called your king, your chief, Khan Father, and then he hijacked him because he wouldn't let him marry into his family. He wouldn't give him his daughters, Prester John. Would not give Genghis Khan his daughters. Letting the dangle the wheat, King David would not give his daughters away to his foster son, his foster nephew, or foster son, or or his nephew. We could be a straight up nephew. We're talking about a melanated tribal war, a tribal family. Now, who benefited from this tribal war? The corporations that are setting themselves up today to rule over the natural lands. They came in and did the treaties with these so-called Moors, and then they did what? To the actual Israelites, to the actual people of Prester John, they went to war. Psalms 83, Papal Bull, Dumb Diverses, Doom Diverses, 1452. So one of the purposes of the voyage, as we have seen, was to find the great Khan and Torres, the convert, the interpreter, was to be the mouthpiece for this encounter, presumably on the basis of his Hebrew. Perhaps Columbus and his supporters, listen up. This is Negro history. This is your last noble image. You don't have another noble image after this. Because as good and great orators as all these other leaders that you want to claim, none of them were bringing you back to Hawa. None of them were connecting you back above the barrier. Priest kings connect you above the barrier. They don't just give you a good black neighborhood with some good black churches and marches down the street. That's, <laughs> this is when people take you, they give you something that looks like you, and they bring you into further captivity. Priest kings, take you out of captivity. Priest kings at least take you mentally out of captivity. And when you free your mind, you free your Messiah. When you free your mind, you free your collective energy, Messiah, and you free yourself. Perhaps Columbus and his supporters had decided that the great Khan reported on by Marco Polo and others might be the Israelite king who dwelt across the river from Prester John. Now there's two Israelite kings. There's priest king Prester John and there's another Israelite king, right? So by the time Columbus gets here, there's two Khans. Perhaps Columbus and his supporters had decided that the great Khan reported on by Marco Polo. So Marco Polo's reporting on a certain Khan might be the Israelite king who dwelt across the river from Prester John. Now, when you get deeper in this, you're going to realize that Prester John was across this moving river, but the river had no water. It was just precious stones, and it was so strong that it was hurling stones up, you know, high into the heavens, to the sky. You know, you couldn't cross this river, and this river only stopped running on the Sabbath. It was called the San Banyan River. It was a river of pretty much flowing precious stones and rocks and all kinds of stuff. Now, when it stopped flowing on the Sabbath, it was crossable, but the family that was in exile, the tribes that were in exile, couldn't cross it because it was the Sabbath. They couldn't cross the Sabbath river on the Sabbath. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they were stuck in exile. The only time they could cross is what was on the Sabbath, but they wouldn't dare cross the Sabbath river on the Sabbath. All right? Who's this Israelite king across the river from Preston John? Let's get back in that San Banyan. You know, I'm just giving you a Shabbat Shalom. I'm talking about the San Banyan. We just vibrating, activating, you know what I'm saying? It's a beautiful thing. I had a great week just building up the infrastructure, building up the website, man. Uh, you know, spreading the frequency of learning, having some great uh, introductions into these schools around Los Angeles, bringing the frequency of learning to the children addressing child behavior through the mathematical frequency of music, we're calming the children down in the classroom, 
It's a beautiful thing, especially for our own. Even with the messed up curriculum, at least we can get them out of some of that spell by putting them, putting them in that four three two, getting them that that pure water frequency to swim in. You know what I mean? And you know, doing some mentoring and all that, man. This is what we do as well. We don't talk about all this stuff. A lot of times we just drop and drop. But we're in the schools. We're mentoring children, man. We're, we're spreading that frequency. It's what you know. I was a teacher for about five years, man. It's not as, you know, I don't talk about my life a lot, believe it or not. But from 04 to 09, you know, I was a school teacher, LAUSD, man. I was doing that while I was doing writing. You know, writing is one of my first passions, so it enabled me to write while still getting some monies, do what I had to do. And I did that until 2009, man. So I learned, you know, a lot about education. I come from a mother and father who were both teachers, educators. My dad was a math teacher, my mom, a, a elementary school principal for over 40 years, you know what I'm saying? So the frequency of learning just went right into my family path, man, to education. So we were able to use all those education ties and put it right back through frequency of learning and do it that way instead of, you know, pushing this curriculum anymore. Now we can go back in those same schools with that 432. So all praise the most high. Oh, man, some good drop. I can't wait to get to it. But right now, I'm going to get back in this chapter three and make our dismount. Let's go. So at a place south of Egypt on the Catalan map, a Saracen king is described as being always at war with the Christians of Nubia who are under the rule of the emperor of Ethiopia of the land of Preston John. I know that was a lot. I know. I'm going to read it slow. At a place south of Egypt on the Catalan map, the Catalan map, you can look it up, K-A or C-A-T-A-L-A-N. All right. It's one of, uh, you know, one of like the most sought after, or, you know, some people say it's the most um, specific, accurate, you know, to some degree of what was really popping. You know what I'm saying? So the Catalan map, so it's a Saracen king, all right? It was a picture of it, he had it. Let's see if he has it in this book here. I thought he had it in the book, but I guess not. I think it's a different version that has uh, these maps in the book, but not this one. I got the cheap one. I got the cheap one, y'all. So a Saracen king is described as being always at war with the Christians of Nubia. Now, are they real Christians or are they what they're calling Nestorians, meaning that they derive from an old king that's renowned for wisdom, for wise counsel? Who's a king renowned for counsel? Who's a king renowned for wisdom? Soliman, Soliman, right? So. The Saracen king is described as being at war, always at war with these Christians of Nubia who are under the rule of the emperor of Ethiopia. So the emperor of Ethiopia is who they're calling Prester John. He's the king of the three Indias, the emperor of the Abyssinias. India is synonymous with Abyssinia or Ethiopia. Ethiopia is synonymous with India, you'll see. of the land of Prester John. So they are subject, these Christians of Nubia are subject to King David or priest king. But Ethiopia is below the southernmost edge of the map and we can learn nothing more about this. The narrators of John de Bethencourt's Canarian expedition speak of going to Africa to obtain news of Prester John. And Prince Henry's chronicler, Gomez Nianes de Zorara, rights of the explorations along the African coast that the prince not only desired to have knowledge of that land but also of the Indies. He wants to know what's up with the mythical places over here in the Indies, America. Indeed, the search for Prester John, Priest John, for the name which is Presbyter Johannes is Latin and Prester John and Pre Petra, Petra John in French is simply a variant of this, was considered by Zorora to be one of the main reasons for Prince Henry's, Prince Henry's whole enterprise. So 
what you're going to find out is the reason for much of these so-called crusades and this whole enterprise about traveling looking for somebody was specifically defined what they're now calling the last noble image of the negro they're looking for the israelite king they're looking for the grand khan by the time columbus got here there was two khans why because genghis khan already hijacked the khan this could have happened in the 700s 800s it could have happened in the 1200s but we know that the khan was hijacked by the melanated family first Genghis Khan hijacked the Khan. So by the time he gets here, he's looking really for Genghis Khan, who already hijacked Prester John. If that's what's flowing out, I mean, I'm just surfing the wave of what seems to be lying out in front of our face bone. So it was the reason for Prince Henry's whole enterprise. It was the reason for much of the crusade. It was the reason they even put a cross on their... Uh, boats because they're looking for that indigenous cross they're, they're, they're looking for the crossing Kitsukoto the Maya priest king also had the Aztec priest king also had the, the cross all over his uh, robe it was a sign of a crossing it's a mark it's a towel it's a sign then the Christians came with their version of the same towel the same sign hijacking your indigenous crossing now it's a symbol of them crossing over to you not you crossing over for freedom but it's a symbol of them crossing over to enslave you thus giving them freedom remember their peace is not your peace their peace means that you are a slave forever your peace means that you get them off your land because they're always going to take your land that's just what the fuck they do that's the track record just look around that's that that's the paper trail uh, that, you know, when you're in the parasitic thing and you ain't got no land, that's all you do is invade and take people's territory, you do that shit forever. We're watching them do it right now. Iraq, Afghanistan, whatever we want to call it. They went there, oh man, we got some weapons. Nah, man, they went there and get those reasons. They, they're still there, right? The same thing they did here. Same thing they did over here. <coughs> Everyone's watching this shit. Now we got this great eclipse coming, right? The great American eclipse. Everyone's freaking out. What are you freaking out for? Anything they freak out about is a good thing for you. Anything that you freak out about is a good thing for them. It's opposite. You scared of something, it's because they're putting that fear in you. When they're freaking out, don't let that fear hit you. You look at that as a good thing because something's scaring the shit out of these people. Now this sun is crossing total, this whole line of totality all throughout uh, America, only America, and it hasn't been done since what? 1776. All right, sorry, I got some people over, man. We just vibing, but I'm hiding, man. I'm hiding back here. Don't let nobody know that drop is back here, man. I'm like in an alleyway somewhere in the, in the backyard, man. So you know, I'm laying low. I'm in the alley, I'm chilling. This is our vibration. Send nobody know about. Nobody come back here, man. You might still hear my, my little ones and my family, man, hanging out, man, just getting Sabbath ready. Let's go. Getting Shabbat ready. Shabbat Shalom. It's almost that time, man. Y'all see the sun coming down. Let's go. Let's go. So check it out. Check it out. We'll get this piece. So the legend of a Christian prince leaving at the other flank, living at the other flank, of the Muslim world. So there's a legend of this Christian prince living at the other flank or other side of the Muslim world. Trying to decode they shit, let's go. Had excited Europe. So they were excited about what they're calling a Christian prince. Because he's not Muslim, he must be, you know, Christian. And it excites them because then it gives them a reason to fight. It gives them a reason to tell their soldiers to keep fighting because there's a Christian prince but they're not really telling them what's really popping so they were excited in Europe for nearly 300 years so Prester John's legend excited these Europeans for over 300 years you don't think the Crusades was all about finding you you don't think the entire Crusades was all about finding you 
And you think the Crusades was way back there in 70 AD and shit like that? 100, 200, 300? Nah, man. This shit just happened. The Columbus is the Crusades. And their timelines, remember, they added 1,300 plus years or so. 1,800. Their, this invasion is that invasion. They just wrote about this invasion and changed the names and made it look like a bunch of invasions that happened a thousand years ago. This invasion is the invasion that we're talking about. So this legend of Prester John excited Europe for over 300 years, man. The last noble image of the Negro excited these people for over 300 years. So then they started selling out in crusades and enterprises to do what? One, they, they, they did want an alliance to help them with the Moors, but once they had that treaty, they turned on all that shit and they went with that papal bull, Doom Diverses. And they went against not all black people, but Israelites specifically, and other tribes such as Moabites and Ammonites, you know, got the benefit from the treaties. And their peoples, their, their, their breeds, the people that they were breeding with, they got the benefit from the treaties and take our lands and titles. Because they're from another tribe. You just don't get it. You just see black. It's the different tribes of black. There's many black tribes. Zeus is black. Nigga, of course Jesus is black. Zeus is black. Of course Jesus is black. <laughs> they're the definition of black. We're the copper color races found here. Sandwiched between Lemuria and Atlantis, man. You're talking about a whole other world. A whole nother vibration. We're talking about the Khans. The Khan dynasties. Let's go. But Henry the Navigator, his zeal to find him may seem surprising in the light of the dismal history of race relations that was in, to ensue as a result. For by this time, listen up. We're talking about Preston John the Priest King, Negro. So by this time, most educated Europeans considered Prester John to be black. Pause it, read it. The bottom of the paragraph. All right. So the legend of your priest king excited these Europeans for over 300 years. For by this time, most educated Europeans, so the ones that knew the drop, considered priest king Preston John to be black or copper color ruddy aboriginal octopton American Wong Khan Preston John this does not mean they had yet specifically identif identified him with the conqueror of Ethiopia as we understand that designation today the geography of the middle ages was too vague for this and the legend more splendid than that monarch or any monarch ever had been in fact Prester John had not originally been placed in Africa at all the legend made its first known appearance in Europe in the 12th century when Bishop Hugh Jabala arrived in Rome to appeal for the second crusade on behalf of the belligerent Christian princes then established in the Near East as a result of the first so then <clears throat> came the reports then came the reports then comes the letters then come the reports and this is going ahead with their crusade at the time this is what's sparking and igniting this thing let's go <laughs> so these romans started appealing for you know what i'm saying this crusade not so much that they wanted to meet Preston John or Priest King, but of course they wanted to conquer. They knew that with this Preston John came the Fountain of Youth, came the Garden of Eden, came all this gold, all the stuff, for the most part, that they did find here. I don't know how much drop they found. I mean, if I had to give my drop meter, I would say that they probably got about 7 to 8 percent, 7 to 9 percent of drop. But I think there's like 90% of drop that they still haven't even touched on. I mean, the Grand Canyon still ain't even really been touched. And that's the truth. So let's get this dismount. So we're talking about Hugh of Jabala. 
told a heartening story about a far eastern king simply named John, a Nestorian Christian. So now they're calling him a Nestorian. Do the etymology on Nestor, Nestorian, and you'll see how it's connecting to this old king renowned for wisdom. For wisdom, they say who had invaded Persia not long before and conquered Ecbatana, its capital. So this Nestorian conquered Persia. So this is ain't no, 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 no white Christian that you know or else he'll be the most famous mofo in the world. He'll be like Alexander, right? In some timelines is linking this to this Alexander situation, but you know, we'll get to it who had invaded Persia not long ago and conquered Ecbatana, its capital. John had then taken his army towards Jerusalem, intending to help its crusader king to defend it against Muslim attack, but had been unable to get his troops across the Tigris, or Tigris, describing John as a descendant of the Magi who had been obeisant, or who, who had obeyed what they're calling <laughs> the infant Jesus so this is when the Christorian or the Nestorian Christorian situation they want to connect Professor John to the three magi of this Jesus story but these magi already have a history throughout the Tanakh throughout the Torah these are the magi these are those that are coming and these you know these are the priests they call them magi that's where you get magician because you have magic like Enoch these are magi Magi didn't just pop up in the New Testament with Jesus, you know what I'm saying? So here they go, you know what I'm saying? You always got to dodge the hijack. So Hugh's story may have been based on the exploits of an actual Tartar king, okay? The Tartars were often in contract, in contact with the far-flung far Nestorian communities of Central Asia. Are we talking about Mazaka? We're talking about Moses? Mosak? and has shown interest in Christianity from time to time. Interest. So they weren't Christians, they showed interest according to the invader. They were interested, right? We're getting the invader's writings, right? So according to the invader, they had interest. Does that make them religious Christians? Or are they connecting Christianity because they're rocking with a similitude of scripture or of these writings? that they're also connected with or they're connecting themselves to your writings. You're a Christian, right? Christ just means anointed, so we're just talking about those that are anointed, those that are rocking with the anointed. They're anointed in their language is Christ, in their Greek. You're anointed as the Mashiach or the Moshi, Moshi, Meshi, Meshi. You know what I'm saying? Meshi, Messiah people. You're the Meshi. You're not Christians, you're Meshika. You're not Christians, you're Meshika, you're Meshi, following the tribes of Moses. What tribes of Moses? What are we talking about? So let's get the rest of this. So the Tartars, uh, so, uh, so the idea that they might be descended from the lost tribes of Israel, so remember, they're connecting them to Central Asia. Now Ronald Sanders is saying, The idea that they might be descended from the lost tribes of Israel also helped encourage the dream that they would one day see the light <laughs> convert to Christianity in mass and form the other jaw of a great Christian pincer movement against Islam. You see what I'm talking about. So they were calling them Nestorians, right? They were calling them Christians, but they, they these were people that weren't Christians, that they just hoped had an interest. So first he said that they were interested in Christianity, but they weren't really Christians. Then he said, well, we hope that they will have an interest to form the other jaw so that they can snap on Islam. They needed an ally against the Moors the Moabites, they are rocking with the Sultan. They're stuck between a rock and a hard place. They either gotta get the Israelites to help them fight these Moors during this time, all right? We're all talking about the 1200s, 1300s, 1400s, 
1500s, they're still looking for Preston John. They're still trying to connect this thing. So it said that the idea that they might be descended from the lost tribes of Israel helped encourage the dream that they would one day see the light. Oh, you're going to convert Israelites to Christianity. That's their dream, right? Remember in uh, Manasseh ben Israel in his world was talking about their quandary of converting Hebrews to Christianity. They say, man, these are Hebrews. They call them Jews. These are Jews, but we know that's, that's a hijack word. We don't say Jew. J-U has a different meaning. Jew has a different ancient fallen meaning. So they put the Jew on things. You're not Jew, all right? And of course, the example of a mass conversion of the Central Asian steppes had been provided by the Khazars. All right, so now you're talking 700 when these Khazars converted. So then they thought that these Khazars, that the Hebrews can convert a little later than that to Christianity, the same way the Khazars converted to Judaism, the study of Israelites. So these white Khazars converted to the study of Judah, Judaism, and then they thought that you're going to convert, that, that Judah will convert to Christianity. These is, this is the twist of these people. Later on, there was to be a widespread but mistaken belief that widespread but mistaken belief that Genghis Khan had become a Christian. So they spread a rumor that Genghis Khan became a Christian, that he he too was interested in Christianity, just like they're saying that you are. Now you got a church on every corner, you black Christians, and you think that this is your thing. Look how hard they tried to convert you to this shit and tell me you're doing something OG and original. Look how hard the invader tried to convert you to this shit. They had to write a whole, you know what I'm saying, what you call it, a whole thesis on this stuff, man, to say, man, I don't know how we're gonna convert Israelites to Christianity. Maybe they'll convert the same way the, con the Khazars converted to them, the same way the, con the Khazars converted to a study of Judah. Maybe Judah will convert. That was their dream, right? So they had a widespread but mistaken belief that Genghis Khan was a Christian. They were mistaken. The Tartar version of the legend was still strong enough in the late 13th century for Marco Polo to assume that a neighboring prince he had heard about while in Cathay was Prester John. So there's a Tartar legend that was still strong enough to give Marco Polo the drop that the neighboring prince or king, the neighboring prince, king or prince, remember, there's two Israelite kings by the time uh, Columbus comes here. He's looking for the Israelite king across from Preston John. Well, now we're talking about the neighboring prince, the Israelite king across from Preston John. So first we talk Genghis Khan mistakenly being called a Christian. Now we're saying his relationship to the neighboring prince, the king, you know what I'm saying, across the river from Preston John. Now the neighboring prince he had heard about in, Cath in Cathay was Preston John. Now Cathay, we got that drop, that Cathay is Cuba. When they say Cuba, and they're talking Cuba, they are interchangeable with what they're finding here in Cathay. In Japan, you got Japan, you got China, Cathay, all really bringing down into this South America area. South America may very well be the real Asia, may very well be the original uh, China, Japan, Cuba, all that, and all this stuff is being reflected over there, just like Egypt, just like everything else that's found right here in the Grand Canyon, right here all across, you know what I'm saying, North America, all throughout Hebron and Bolivia, all throughout Jerusalem. We're talking about the old world territory and it's gonna really mess you up for a little bit, but pretty soon you'll start stepping in your shoes again when you realize you're walking in the old world and you're from it. Everything you've read about is you. I used to hate reading books, man, I promise, man, until I realized I was the book. Then I became interested like a mofo to see what's really popping with that real spill.
let's get this right here get our dismount popping so despite such miracles i'm on page 42 let's get it right here last page y'all let's get it despite such miracles of nature the main feature of the landscape in prester john's realm seems to be desert it is dominated by a waterless sandy sea i, I told you that the san banyan river it had no water but just had these rocks and sand and precious rocks on which the sand moves and swells into waves like the sea and is never still. I know it sounds like a myth, just like the fountain of youth, because you've been programmed to believe it and you've been programmed to believe their lies and to deny reality. So I look like I'm crazy, right? You know, the person telling you everything you heard before seems like they're saying cognitive dissonance let's go despite such miracles of nature all right the main feature in the landscape of Preston John we're talking about a waterless sandy sea on which the sand moves so it's got this waterless sea the sand moves and swells into waves like the sea and is never still after the desert journey of three days from the sea one reaches mountains from which descends like a waterless river on stones which flows through our country to the sandy sea three days in the week it flows and casts up great stones both great and small and it also carries with it wood wood to the sandy sea when the river reaches the sandy reaches the sea the stones and wood disappear and are not seen again while the river is in motion it is impossible to cross so there's a couple different sources on this one is saying that it flows for three days another which we've gotten you can go uh just go get the drop put in king drop san banya you know s-a-m-b-a-t-y-o-n and you'll see the other source saying that it runs every day except for the Sabbath. All right, so let's go. So this one says three days in a week it flows and casts up stones, both great and small, and also carries with it wood to the sandy sea. When the river reaches the sea, the stones of the wood disappear and are not seen again while the river is in motion. It is impossible to cross. On the other four days, it can be crossed. The desert character of the rim is further suggested by John's particular stress upon elephants, drome daris, and camels. So we got camels over here, all right? Old world, let's go. Among the many animals to be found there yet, for all this heredity, there is abundance. The Sandy Sea, for example, contains all kinds of edible fish. So we have a Sandy Sea with no water but edible fish. Sounds like a myth in the realm of Preston John, Priest King. Where then is this remarkable country or magnificence, writes Preston John, dominates? Where then is this remarkable country? Our magnificence, writes Preston John, dominates the three Indias. So the Indies are Indias, and you're in one of them. And extends to the farther India where the body of St. Thomas the Apostle rests. It reaches through the desert towards the place of the rising of the sun and continues through the valleys of the deserted Babylon close by the Tower of Babel. So they were crossing out of Babylonian captivity. Suddenly the vague immensity takes on a biblical tinge. This is deepened when John informs us that his territories comprise the Pison which is one of the four rivers that rise up out of the terrestrial paradise according to the second chapter of Genesis. So this region here, just like Columbus Ben told you that the Orinoco River flows out of terrestrial paradise coming out of South America, he found a river he's calling that flowed out of the terrestrial paradise of Eden. So Eden is here, we're connecting it to South America. Preston John is saying that his land connects to the Pison, P-I-S-O-N, all right? Talking the biblical old world, the Americas, Americans. Mm -hmm. 
furthermore, like the land of Ivala, around which the biblical Python flows, John's country contains gold and onyx. Ah, the children with the gold and the onyx. It also flows with milk and honey. A hint at the location of the rim is provided by Genesis 2.13, which tells us that another of the four rivers is Eden, the Gihon, compacted the whole land of Ethiopia. We're going to get on this Ethiopia again. John tells us that his palace is in Susa, the ancient capital of Persia. But this also implied proximity to Ethiopia in the vague geographical imagination of the medieval Europe. Vague geographical location. Because they created duplicates and phantoms. Phantom worlds. Phantom old worlds. Duplicate old worlds. Let's go. As centuries passed, the continental rim of the Prester John letter clearly somewhat south of the original Tartar centers of the legend was to be increasingly identified as Ethiopia, the, Z the Zoroastro like character who thus begins to emerge can be perceived as deeply bound up in the imagery and the mythology of ancient East. In some ways, he is another version of the noble non-European, non-European whose western counterpart we have come upon in the fortunate islands, but there are significant differences. Unlike the fortunate islander, this, this sophisticated oriental knows both the value of money and the necessities of war. The western idea was founded in the classical simplicity and closeness to the fresh and fertile nature, whereas this oriental one reposes in a natural environment that is harsh, forbidding, and old, and that yields up minerals and miracles more readily than vegetation. The way of life and vision for the West was essentially democratic. This Eastern one is the best of all possible monarchies. The fortunate I islands beckon to pioneers, Prester John's domains to pilgrims and saints. So the fortunate islands beckons to pioneers, Prester John's domains to, to pilgrims and saints. So Prester John's domain beckons to pilgrims and saints. And now you got pilgrims coming over here. You're doing Thanksgiving because of these pilgrims coming over here to the Holy Land that Columbus conquered. Now you got people walking around the Holy Land claiming that they're American. But are they the copper color races found here? So Prester John's domain beckons to pilgrims and saints while the noble village or the noble savage seems as a far as a future far from the clutter of decadent civilization our noble Ethiopian makes a plea for the treasures both material and spiritual that may still be found among the rubble of a sacred past he represents a kind of archaeological rediscovery a digging up of Hellenistic Christian origins in the East to which Western Europeans have finally been drawn in the age of the Crusades. The Prester John legend thus emerges as a Christian counterpart to those visions. It's a Christian counterpart. He's not a Christian. They're putting it as a counterpart because they want the other jaw. They have one jaw. They want the other jaw to snap or to crush Islam because they couldn't have it both ways. They wanted these black people crushed and those black people crushed. These black people gotta help these black people. But are we black or are they black? Do you need to be black to have your copper power? To be a copper conduit? Is there a mineral called black? Or is there a mineral called copper? What are you relating to? What energy are you tuning into? So Prester John legend thus emerges as a Christian counterpart to those visions of a longed for an ancient East. Longed for East. They longed for something like this. That you are. That we have glimpsed among Muslims and Jews of the Iberian Peninsula. They've glimpsed it in Spain because they've seen you come, come and go there. Indeed, it represents an assertion for Europe in general of that tolerant spirit. 
Oh, the tolerant spirit of Europe. <laughs> Come on, Ronald Saturn. Right, let's go. It represents an assertion for Europe in general of that tolerant spirit represented above all by medieval Spain and acceptance of that East in some of its cultural and racial complexity. In fact, the Preston John letter may at least in part have Jewish roots or Israelite roots. Well, we're connecting that all over the place, right? King David. In the desert that separates the mountains from the sandy sea, the writer tells us an underground rivulet turns into a large river in which an abundance of precious stones is to be found. So the same sandy sea, they say it flows for three days. Another source says it flows for six days. Either way, there is this river. And let's read about it. So this large river has an abundance of precious stones. Beyond this river, he goes on, are 10 tribes of Jews or Israelites, right? So beyond this river here in South America, most likely, is an underground, what they call a rivulet. That means it's a bunch of underground rivers or waters. Just like in Utah, there's a bunch of underground rivers throughout the Four Corners, right? Now he's saying beyond this river that is not water, but it's just sand and precious stones. Beyond this river are 10 tribes of Israel, 10 tribes of Jews, 10 tribes of Negroes, who though they pretend to have their own king, so these 10 tribes are acting like they got their own king. Is that Genghis Khan? Though they pretend to have their own king, are nevertheless our servants and tributaries. So Preston John is saying, yeah, if you go beyond this magical sandy river of precious stones, there's there's the other ten tribes. Remember, he's King David, right? I mean, if you surf this way, if you if you surf in the way, he's King David. So King David of Judah is saying, yes, there's the other ten tribes and they are pretending to have their own king but they pay tribute to me I'm King David I'm the king of Judah I have you know all these kings paying tribute to me including the northern kingdom of Israel because I'm King David and that's how it rocks I'm the emperor of the entire world I'm the emperor of all the Indias I'm King David I'm Prester John priest king yes even the northern tribe king, whoever they're pretending to, to be king, their king, he still has to pay tribute to priest king Prester John, king of Judah. Or are we talking about, you know, the tribes of Moses? Let's go. Because we're going to get into these tribes of Moses. We might have to get, in, you know, maybe we'll mention something on them this time. All right, we'll do a dismount on the tribes of Moses. Let's go. So beyond this river, the San Banyan River, are the other ten tribes that are paying tribute to Preston John. Now it says nothing more on this subject is said in the original version of the letter, but it is noteworthy that in the embroidered versions produced by later generations, so we have a later generation version of this letter, let's see how this later one reads. And let's see which one is the hijack, the original or the later version. In the English version of 1507, uh-oh, you already know, they're going to come with an hijack. It's, it's the English version in 1507. For example, the weak kings of the above passage become a great king of Israel, whom Prester John concedes. So instead of him having these, you know, other, this other king, king across the river pay tribute to him, he's now saying, nah, there's a great Israelite king that I have to pay tribute to. So in the, in the, in, in the later version, he is now paying tribute to somebody instead of him being the noble image, you know what I'm saying, that's being, you know, paid tribute to. So, that hijack happened in 1507. I know I got my fan back on. Let's just make our dismount, let's go. 
So in the English version of 1507, the weak kings from above, the kings that are paying him tribute, become a great king of Israel. So they actually say it, great king of Israel. So either way, we got a king of Israel here, my people. So now in the English version of 1507, it's a great king of Israel whom Prester John concedes, he's now conceding in the latter version, to be twice as strong as I am. His domains are twice as great as all Christendom in Turkey, and he hath under him 300 kings, 4,000 princes, dukes, earls, barons, knights, squires without number. All right, so it sounds like someone's now hijacking the origin. Now he's putting it on someone else that Preston John is now paying tribute to. You see what I'm saying? So again, we have a Genghis Khan siding around here. You know, how does he fit into this, uh, you know what I'm saying, whole equation. I told y'all we're going to get into these tribes of Moses. I'll put it up here for you. Let's see if you can get it right there. little bit up there too let's just get it man page 46 man dismount season so we have seen it functioning just this way in the Prester John letter but the neighbors across the river in Eldad's account are not Prester John and his Christian subjects here rather is Eldad's description of them all right so Eldad you know look up Eldad E-L-D-A-D -D. we're talking about Eldad the Danite Eldad the Danite there is also the tribe of Moses. So this is from Eldad to Danite, y'all. This is also, there is also the tribe of Moses. We're not just talking about Levites. We're talking about the tribe of Moses or Mosak or Meshech. Just like in Josephus, he tries to put the, the, the Meshika, the Mesek, Meshech, Moshak, Moshi, Moshe. They try to put Moshe and Josephus, right, kind of sliding another slide in the tribe of Moses. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, Moses has his own tribe rocking. The Meshika have their own tribe. Let's go. So there's also the tribe of Moses, our just master. Alright. So you can see it. No small. Let's get it. So there is also the tribe of Moses, our just master, which is called the tribe of Yanis, Y-A-N-U-S, or Yahanis, or Juan, or John. Yanis is Yahanis is John. So which are we talking about? Is this priest king, you know, the tribe of Judah? Is it another tribe, the tribe of Moses? And how is this related? Obviously, it's all related, right? So they're called the tribe of Yannis. The tribe of Moses is the tribe of John, the tribe of Yannis. Because it fled from the idol worship and clung to the fear of God, clung to the fear of Hawa. So this tribe is called the tribe of Moses, but they're also called the tribe of Yannis, which literally means fleeing, like they're fleeing from something. They're fleeing from something. They're fleeing from idols. This tribe of Moses is fleeing from idols and idol worship. So they say there's also the tribe of Moses. Our our just master, which is called the tribe of Yannis, because it fled from idol worship and clung to the fear of God. A river flows round their land for a distance of four days journey on every, every side. So here we go, we got this sand river again. Now it's flowing all across his land and it's cutting them off from, it's separating them. 
you know what I'm saying? So a river flows around their land for a distance of four days journey on every side. They dwell in beautiful homes provided with handsome towers, which they have built themselves. They sow and reap and have all sorts of gardens with all kinds of fruit and cereals, namely beans, melons, gourds, onions, garlic, wheat, barley, and the seed grows a hundredfold. Does it sound like they're taken care of? The tribe of Yan, John, priest king, the tribe of Moses, Meshe, Mashika. Are you the Mashika? Are you the tribes of Moses? So their seed grows a hundredfold. They have faith. They know the law. They have faith. They know the law. Do you know the law? Are you the tribes of Moses? Are you the Meshi, the Meshika? The tribes of the Messiah. Moreover, they, they know the law. They see nobody and nobody sees them except the four tribes who dwell on the other side of the rivers of Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Keep that to the side. Ethiopia. Ethiopia is here. Remember Samuel Seawall came to America and said, oh, these Ethiopians as black as they are, these Ethiopians here in America, not because you came from there, but because they found the farther India, the furthest India, the furthest Ethiopia. They found you in the furthest Ethiopia, sandwiched between Atlantis and Lemuria. You kept the law. They said they know the law. Moreover, they see nobody, and nobody sees them except the four tribes who dwell on the other side of the rivers of Ethiopia. They see them and speak to them, but the river San Banyan is between them so the, so the tribes could see each other we could speak but there's a river of sand and stone precious stones that was between us separating us from our brothers and sisters they were in exile the ten tribes were in exile and here it says the four tribes so you know we're putting it together we're not tripping on ten or four or three or six it's just Put the story together and you'll get the drop. You'll get the original. So it says four tribes dwelt on this side. Maybe four more dwelt on the other side. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Now it says they have plenty of gold and silver. And cultivate the crimson worm. And make beautiful garments. So their garments are beautiful. They have the gold, the silver. Now, are they Levites? Of course they're Levites, but they're a specific tribe of Levites. It says these are Levites. So yes, they're Levites. Of the tribe of Moses. So Moses had his own tribe. These are all Levites, but they're of Moses' tribe. They're a special tribe of Levites. And if they're Levi, you're talking Levi, you're talking Judah, you know what I'm saying? So you're talking about the southern tribes, the southern kingdoms, right? So either way, he will be the Israelite king. Whoever's carrying the priest king title will be the Israelite king that has dominion over the other tribes by law, by order. So these are Levites of the tribe of Moses and the priesthood, the priesthood, the Meshe, Meshi, Moshe, Meshika, priesthood. And though not all of them are necessarily prophets or priests, a whole nation of them implies an exalted religiosity. Dr. Hijack, a whole nation of them, you will be a nation of priests. So these were a nation of priests. This is a priestly nation, the Mashika, the Azteca. Indeed, they too, they were too exalted for the possession of territory in biblical times. So they were too exalted for the possession of territory in biblical times. So they were a separate tribe of Levites that didn't just rock with 
being in one place or one territory. They come from above the barrier. You're talking about an energy from above the barrier. You're not just from the earth. You know what I'm saying? You come and pass through it. You, you come and make it right. You come and establish it. You establish the order. But your energy comes from above the barrier. And some of these tribes only connected to that. They didn't have to get an earthly possession. They didn't have to get earthly, earthly gold and silver. They didn't need it. They didn't need a possession. Their possession was the energy, that Ruwak. The Ruwak from above the barrier. Hawa, the framer and shaper, was all they needed. These are the tribes of Moses. Who is Prester John? Who is the priest king? Wang Khan, Prester John. Who was the Meshi, the Meshika, who's the Messiah? And you better choose your Joshua. So the last part is this. Indeed, they were too exalted for the possession of territory in biblical times. They were not one of the 12 tribes among whom Joshua divided up the land of Canaan. So they didn't get a possession because their possession was above the barrier. Their possession was Hawaii. They are therefore not one of the ten lost tribes. This legend of a gathering of them in a country of their own is not exclusive to Eldad, but its origins are quite obscure and is the name, and as is the name it gives them. Yanis is simply a Hebrew word that means fleeing. Yanis, Yahanis means fleeing, to flee. They're fleeing from idol worship. They're fleeing, they're fleeing from savagely breaking the vibration, the law. So Yanis means fleeing in Hebrew so that it may not be a proper name but part of a designation. The tribe that flees. The tribe that flees. They are the tribe that flees. Flees from idols. Worshipping idols. They flee from it, man. We all have to be a tribe that flees from idols. That's why they had all the drop. That's why they had the Eden and the Fountain of Youth and, and, and all those connections. That's why they had it all still. Because they were fleeing from idols, this priest king, Prester John. They were the last noble images. And Prester John, priest king, is your last noble image. Negro. Other texts make Giannis a proper name, which can either be that of a tribe or its Levite founder that could be a direct forebearer of Prester John. We're only talking Ethiopia, man. And you know we like to get this we like to get the fine print. But just remember, when you hear Ethiopia, one of the three e Indias. We have three Indias, right? So he's priest king of the three Indias. One of the three Indias faced Ethiopia, according to Pseudo Abdias the second faced Persia. And the third occupied the ends of the earth. So one Ethiopia faced so called one India faced so called Ethiopia. The other India faced Persia. And the third India where they found you, Negro. occupied the ends of the earth these are what they would call the ends of the earth they found you sandwiched between Lemuria and Atlantis man two huge sunken continents you've been found in between them they call you a new world here and they bring you new world order which is chaos right and they found you in the third India priest king had them all remember it was all connected right So one India faced so-called Ethiopia, another India faced Persia, and another India occupied the ends of the earth between the ocean and the rim of darkness. Where you at, man? Where you at? What's this rim of darkness really talking about, man? The third became especially fruitful for the geographical imagination, the rim of untold islands in which the plural Indias, etymologically one and the same as Indies, came to rest for once and for all. 
So then the term rested as Indies, but it's the Indias. If they say Indies, it doesn't strike as much of a consciousness spark as Indias. You're like, Indias? How many Indias are there? Three. Three Indies. Well, which one am I in? The third Indy. Facing the occupying the ends of the earth and the rim of darkness to them. Remember, their darkness is your light. Their darkness is your light. Their new is your old. New world is old world. West is east, north is south. Just telling you like it is, and you're going to get this on your own time. So here's the last last bit of it, man. And we out of here, man. Shabbat Shalom. So... India is etymologically one and the same as Indies came to rest once and for all. There also were less mysterious, more valid definitions of the three Indias among medieval geographers. But for most Europeans, for most Europeans, for most white people, even the learned ones, even the ones that knew some shit, for most learned Europeans, the term Ethiopia or India covered a vast and distant region of dark skinned people, culminating in the countless array of islands in one direction and in Ethiopia, the biblical Cush in the other direction. But what they're calling biblical Cush was really here too. But I know what they mean. So they're saying that. This vast region of dark skinned people west, dark skin, vast region east. Either way, you're in an India. Either way, you're in an Ethiopia. And all the land is connected, right? So an Ethiopian over here is an Ethiopian over there. India over here is India over there. It's all connected, right? So don't let the terminology mess you up because you think you're talking about geographically one area. You're talking about a whole vast region of dark skinned people. For most learned Europeans, for Europeans, even the learned ones, the term India, Indies, covered a vast and distinct, excuse me, a vast and distant region. A whole distant region. So they're not talking about a region that's close to them, my people. They're talking about the region that they couldn't get to. They're talking about the region that was a myth to them. That was a legend to them. The three Indias, Presta John, priest king of all three Indias. Your priest king, your last noble image, Negro. For most Europeans, even the ones that were learned, the term covered a vast and distant region of dark-skinned people. Just a vast, general, vast region. Culminating in a countless array of islands in one direction. Where's that? They're talking about this direction, right? The Indias, the islands. And in the Ethiopia, the biblical Kush in the other direction. So they're, put, they're, they're putting it in Africa, fine. I know at least it gives us orientation. They're saying that there's an India there, an India here, an Ethiopia there, an Ethiopia here. And that's what Ronald Sanders is saying. One twenty. Presta John was left in the Abyssinian dust. And with that legend went for the time being all hope of a noble image of the Negro to counter the one that was coming with growing force out of West Africa. Now we put it together. When we ask, man, who was Preston John? You know what we're talking about. We're talking about timelines. We're talking about chronology. We're talking about the actual story that was turned into a legend or a myth. And when that was even taken away from us, 
with that legend went all hope of the noble image of the Negro. Lost tribes and promised lands. Shabbat Shalom. I love y'all, man. We vibrating, man. It's about the time for me to, you know, go ahead and kick back, man. Enjoy some great food, man. Love to my wife that, you know, keeps it all ready, man. Keep, keeps it all always flowing. I mean, she is my Sambat Yan. She is my river of precious stones. And I love Chef Candy, man. Keep checking us out. You know what I'm saying? Whatever we do, we do it for you. We do it for the whole tribe and the whole community. So, you know, keep rocking with 432 to drop support every way you can. And just keep uh, enjoying the website, man. Put the vibe suites on so you can have a beautiful Shabbat. Put on those flutes, man. Just let 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 the lovers rock flow. Put on that lovers rock and be in the loving vibration. I'm about to put the midnight hour up right now. Then we're gonna put up the drop, the uh, drop mix, man. The whole drop zone. I'll put up those vibe suites, those um those drop albums that Isaac Ford's been tuning up. Keep sending Isaac your request, Isaac at four three two the drop.com so you can tune up whatever you like and just look forward for beautiful things man we're just doing it we're doing it for you shabbat shalom who is Preston john he is the last noble image he is your last noble image and we on your ass Preston john we on your ass shabbat shalom